So how do we predict bond polarity? Uh, if you recall, uh, ionization energy increases left to right okay, across a row in your periodic table, and so does electron affinity. And so what is ionization energy? A measure of how hard it is to remove an electron from an atom. And electron affinity is a measure of uh, the ability of an atom to accept an electron, right? So the higher the electron affinity and the higher the ionization energy, the higher the electronegativity. Now, Pauling, Linus Pauling, invented the scale, a scale for electronegativity, which ranges from point set where he assigned values. Okay, on his scale, francium, which is on the bottom right corner of your periodic table right here, is assigned an electronegativity of 0.7, and fluorine, which is right here, and the uh, right here in the upper right-hand corner of your periodic table has the highest electronegativity, so given a value of 4.0. Okay, he based those values on bond dissociation energies, and he compared the bond dissociation energies with the experimental dipole moment of HCl, HBr, and HF, and he came up with a formula that relates the partial ionic character, the ionic character of a bond, to the difference between electronegativities. Okay, so delta E n right here is the difference in the electronegativity between two, between two atoms that are in a bond, and you can calculate the partial uh, charge, your ionic character. Okay, that's one minus e to the minus delta delta E n squared over four. Okay, um, so. Um, you can classify bonds as polar or nonpolar depending on the difference in the electronegativities. If the electronegativities are the same, so the difference in electronegativity is zero, then you have what's called a pure covalent or nonpolar bond. Okay, your ionic character is zero. Why is that? Delta would be one minus e to the zero over four, right? Zero squared. So one minus what's what is zero squared divided by four? Zero. What is e to the zero? E to the anything raised to the power zero is one. So what's one minus one? Zero. Okay. So if you have two atoms with the same electronegativity, then we say the bond between those two atoms is pure covalent. Now. If the electronegativity difference is larger than zero, okay, then you have what's called a polar covalent bond. But typically, okay, uh, we have what we, we call we might say a rules of thumb that say if the electronegativity difference is greater than two, we say that the bond is essentially ionic. Okay, what does that mean? Uh, let's calculate delta if the, the difference in electronegativity is 2. Delta equals 1 minus e to the negative 2 squared over 4. Right? If the, the difference is 2. So that's 1 minus e to the... What's 2 squared over 4? 1. Right? So what's 1 minus e to the negative 1? That's 1 minus 1 over e. Okay? Or 1 minus e to the negative 1. So how do I get e to the negative 1 on my calculator? I'm going to say negative 1 inverse natural log. e to the x is just the inverse of e. Raising e to the power x means taking the inverse of the natural log. Okay? So um, I'm going to say I have negative 1 inverse now uh, here's e to the x, right here. Okay, so it's 0.37. So it's 1 minus 0.37, so that's about 0.63. So you say uh, 0.63 would be 63% ion. Okay, so what we call a 63% uh, charge transfer from one atom to another, we say that bond is essentially ionic. That electronegativity with Electronegativity difference is big enough, so we can say that the bond is essentially ionic. So the larger the difference in electronegativity, the more the greater the ionic character. Here's a way of looking at it. If I make A way more electronegative than B, 
okay so you have you increase your partial charge the molecule becomes more and more polar okay so you have a uh, so you say your bond is more ionic now when the electronegativity is less than 0.5 okay when your electronegativity is less than 0.5 you'll find that your partial uh, charge would be less than 6%. The transfer of electrons between the two atoms is less than 6%. We say that even though, strictly speaking, the bond is polar covalent, it is still polar covalent, we say that because that difference is so small, we say that the bond is essentially nonpolar. Now, keep in mind, these are just rules of thumb, and they vary depending on textbooks. Some textbooks would have 1.8 as a threshold between ionic and covalent. So this is just a you might say um, rough rules that you can use to gauge whether you're go looking at an ionic bond or a, uh, a nonpolar bond or a polar bond. Okay, so um, keep those in mind. Um, 